You're watching Escape It All Hood Live, your number one source for long-lasting, fast-acting, physician-approved adultitis relief. On this week's show, we're talking about staycations, cat dance parties, and why the only prescription to a better life is more cowbell. Greetings and salutations. This episode is brought to you by people like Krista Schmelk, Mary Beth Updike, and Stephen Saki. Their membership in the Wonder and Women's Society supports us in this work to fight adultitis. Thank you guys. Yes, and if you'd like to annihilate the adultitis in your life, learn more about the Wonder and Whimsy Society, or be the first to know about our newest offerings, become an insider at escapeadulthood.com slash subscribe. Happy Wednesday, everybody. It is uh, it is a great day because we are in the middle of a staycation. Woohoo! <laughs> Summertime Wait, in Wait, are Sheboygan. we working? Yeah, on our staycation. This doesn't feel this like doesn't work, work though. This, this is, is like playing shenanigans. This is shenanigans. And speaking of shenanigans, summer. Those of you who are coming to the summit will not be disappointed. The weather here in Sheboygan is amazing, and we've been enjoying it, haven't we? We have. Yeah. It's, uh, it's been great. Uh, we got a little rain. Apparently, Lake Michigan is like an air conditioner. It's pretty, pretty nice. Yes, we are loving the cool breezes um, and the sunrises continue. I was on day number 24 of my 30 uh, day quest this morning. Jason's been joining me for the last few sunrises. Uh, yeah. I don't know what that's about. Okay, but, yeah, um, just to let you in on this. So he's like, how do we, you know, maximize our staycation with three kids? Anyone relate to this where you're like, I don't really feel like I'm on vacation when I'm parenting. Is that a relatable? That's a good, that's a good point. Yes. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so I said, well, if you join me for the sunrise, you'll gain like two and a half hours of your life every day. And uh, so far, I don't know. What do you think? Uh, not bad. Not yeah, bad. Yeah. No, though. it's nice. It's, it's tiring. Uh, yeah. It's just, it's just shifting shifting the day. But I, I mean, I had been getting up pretty early to begin with, but I, I have been missing the sunrises in the summer because that sun just gets up early. It's early, yes. Uh, so let's yeah. let's see what's going on here in the comments because well, you asked a really good we, question. We asked what your who your favorite Saturday Night Live character is. And I've, I've got a, a couple lot of Will votes Ferrell. for Church Lady. Oh, Dana uh, which Carvey, is great. right? Um, Chris Farley. So great. Mm -hmm. uh, Gilda Radner. Oh, good classic. classic. Lisa, yes. Kelsey classic. says Will Ferrell and Molly Shannon as the cheerleaders. <laughs> good. Uh, right? Paul is in on the Belushi Samurai skits. Oh, yes. Yes, um, you can't. Good. You can't deny him. He's and uh, yeah, I, well, let's see. Who said? Someone said. Uh, no one said Wayne and Garth. No, but who said? Excellent. Someone said Goulet. Uh, Goulet. Uh, <laughs> uh, Will Ferrell as Robert Goulet. That's like, immediately I thought Goulet. How about Goulet. Stuart Smalley? Mm, I mean, I, I, gosh darn it, people like me. I, <laughs> do they? <laughs> what was the other one? Um, from Portlandia, what's his face? Uh, oh, uh, um, come on, you guys. The guy that Fred Armisen. Oh, he he pretty much makes me laugh no matter what he does. Yeah. Um, what was so, his ca his catchphrase? He had one that we used to say uh, all the time. After watching Portlandia, I'm gonna. Mess I'm just up kidding. Oh. <laughs> that one. That's one of them. Yeah. 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 Uh, so anyway, Jennifer <laughs> says the lady who put her ha hands in her armpits. That's Molly Shannon, yes. wasn't it? Yes. Was uh, she the cheerleader? Mary Catherine for that something Gallagher? something. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. How about it, <laughs> how about deep thoughts from Jack Handy? That, oh, that was underrated. That's Heather. one of my favorites. Yes. Yeah. There's some good memes. Uh, cone, if you haven't heads. checked out the deep thought memes, there's some good ones on that too. Yeah. The cone heads, Martha. Yes. Yes. A uh, little shout out to L Hendricks who was on on here tonight. Uh, okay. Thank yes. you, L. She did a wonder workshop. I guess I did. And whimsy society about um, had a little bit of technical difficulties, but well, I think she through. adultitis lost because they were talking about how to have more fun at work, and L is the queen of fun at work. Um, so it's, I sound it sounded like it was awesome. Yeah, I'm yeah. really excited about those. Shannon Babb has also done mm -hmm. some bedtime book clubs where 
they 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 read and talk about a children's book, which is kind of cool. Like we and don't. Jen Taggart's on that. tonight too. Yeah, she Jen led a did member a, workshop uh, as well. Art workshop not that long ago. So that's really cool because it's it's it, the, the Wonder and Whimsy Society is growing, and people are getting more involved, and it's just it's pretty rad. So, um, yes, Al says there's more whimsy at yes. work to come. She's got a lot of ideas. I think she's doing three total workshop so nice. uh hopefully um those of you who are in wonder room society will be able to check that out sharon big duran duran fan she said she only watched snl when duran duran oh wow out, which you gotta love That's... how they had the musical guests that is kind of yeah. i love how we're talking about snl as if it's like past tense i know well <laughs> i don't know if anyone currently watches it is that, do uh, not. i think of musical guests wasn't that one of the most controversial moments was when um Oh. Sinead O'Connor yes. tore up a picture of the Pope, was yes. it? Like, ooh, that was, hey, that was pretty big revolutionary deal at the time, at the right? time right? Now, if only, now. We could, <laughs> only we could settle for that level of friendliness, that would be an improvement, unfortunately, to where we are these days. But we digress. That's yeah. not why we're here to talk about this stuff. We're, t- we're here to talk about what is going on. Well, this is the part of the show (laughs) where we put up a photo and we ask what's going on. And we invite you to leave a comment of what you think the caption is for this. What what in the world is going on here, Kim? Was this given to us by Kara? I believe Kara Kara Tracy found this somewhere and uh, sent it along a while ago. And I thought this would be perfect for what's going on. As we wait for those comments to come in, I, we were, you know, we were talking about the uh, staycation. Do you have a highlight so far of our? You know, yesterday was kind of rainy, which we need the rain, so there is no complaining. Um, but we went to see Peter Rabbit too, and if you've not seen the first Peter Rabbit, this is who's the Peter Rabbit voice? Yeah, you think an Oscar nod or? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, though, if you don't have kids or grandkids, these are pretty funny movies. I'm, it, I think it falls under the category of like any grown up should enjoy these movies. It's pretty good, yeah. you know. Yeah. The main character, Peter Rabbit, is that main. Who's that guy? He's very famous, James Corden. Yes. Mm-hmm. So you know he's enjoyable. Um, but the second one did not disappoint. I actually laughed out loud quite a few times, and I'm not the Oops. easiest laugh out louder at a movie, to be honest. Yeah. Like. I'm more of a, you know, a silent laughter. Let's down a little bit. There oh, we there go, go, Rachel. Yes. Okay, yes. Peter Rabbit's so awesome, right? I know. I laughed out loud so many times. Um, so that was remarkable to me because I was busy eating popcorn after all, you know. <laughs> shout, <laughs> I want to choke. Shout out to Martha, by the way, joining from the Atlanta airport. Oh, my gosh. To Savannah to visit my sister. Aww. Eli, it was a great way to pass time on a layover. Yay. Totally agree. And I can't believe that you're able to pick it up either on Wi Fi or. Um, That's amazing. Uh, just the network. Savannah, you know, 4G, your sister. 5G. Talk about adultitis fighting. We kind of gotten to know your sister a little bit from the show. So I love uh, Bobby's Burger Palace oh. in the Atlanta airport. I've been, it's been a while. We haven't been traveling very much. I used to have Bobby's all my Burger favorite Palace. haunts. Atlanta and I don't know airport. which ones will still be around, but that is one I always like to check out. Okay. Right. Uh, what is going on with this picture, Wes? Cat, cat scratch fever, like that. Kelsey, <laughs> the claws are out, right? Saturday set dance. Party. Oh, I love it. Mm-hmm. Where's Stephen? He would appreciate that. Yes, he would. Oh, uh, Stephen, you'll see it in the replay. Everybody was kung fu fighting. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. That's good. That face, uh, what else we right? got? Uh, cat hurting. I know. I <sighs> whose face is more that guy? The is girl? Kevin Bacon, by the way. The cat. Is it Kevin Bacon? I. Maybe. No, I don't think it is. But okay. It like um, what else? Christy says this is Friday night at her oh, house. Oh, nice. Christy the cats are grooving. As she had a, has a cat in her profile photo. Uh, punk rock kitty show. Nice. Yeah. It does mm-hmm. seem to be The punk. thing is, is it, it it feels like this is Photoshopped, but if it's Photoshopped, this is one of the best Photoshops ever. <laughs> because you can even see like the cat that's like going like this. There's like the... Uh. The shadow behind it—that's like a flash shadow—and you really have to be good to get. How do you see that? To know what you're doing. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> that's what I do. Jason sees what light I and do. shadow and things. I don't understand. Yay uh, for travel to Savannah. Pa- right? Paul says they mix the catnip with the weed. <laughs> be careful. Who the the dancers In or? <laughs> several states. That's 
perfectly legal. Yes, yeah. it is. <laughs> Not ours, but... Dude, this catnip is amazing. <laughs> Mike. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's good. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, Elsa's cat scratch fever. I got the fever. <laughs> More, More cowbell. Oh, she's pulling it in. That's like a foreshadowing. That that's not even like a callback. This is like, uh, this is a, quite a prom dance here. Oh, right? yes. Catastic. Is it, is it the it. cats? Are they dating each other? Did they go together? Or did one of them go with this, this kid? Maybe? What do you think? You know, the more I think about this, I mean, this is stating the most obvious, but this has to be Photoshop, right? I mean, come Kelsey's on. Kelsey's trying to figure out where the shoe slash foot is coming from. <laughs> oh. That's a good point. Oh. Is that that girl? That's the girl's foot. Is that why the guy is grimacing? Oh. That's a very interesting. Maybe he's getting a little bit fresh with the cats and the girl oh. doesn't like that. I don't know. <laughs> That's a good question. That's why we're asking these questions. I see now what you're saying. Attack of the cats from Mars. Mm, Cynthia, I think there is some attacking going on. I will say cats don't strike me as the dancing type. They seem more like the wallflower, leave me alone, go away type. Right. Right. Which is definitely not happening in this. Sharon says the girl's foot is going under his leg. Yes, which could be Uh, explaining his whole face. To the chagrin of that dude. Did Kara, I didn't see, did Kara comment on this since she sent it in? There were a bunch of people claiming that who sent it okay. in and who first posted it. Okay, so, so we've got I don't a, want to a get in the middle times. of that. Apparently this must have been I bopping did, around the I, net. When I was looking for cat memes, which you'll find earlier, I did see this okay. multiple places. So this so has been around been the block a few times. Recently, uh, maybe. But it was okay. a first for me. So uh, <laughs> I, I thought it was pretty rad. And uh, what does Rachel say? Rachel says, when you find out you aren't the only one the guy you met online is dating. Ah, yeah. yeah that could be her swipe, face. <laughs> what is it? Swipe left, swipe right? I don't, I don't know. Oh. I don't, I'm not in the game, so I don't know. How do you even know that? Uh, oh, I guess boy. I'm just really smart. Well, this is this is good exercise for our brains yeah, tonight, doing you guys. doing <laughs> Uh, fun stuff, fun stuff playing with you guys. Uh, it's been a while. I was missing that segment. So I said to Jason, we got to do that. Didn't someone send us a picture? And sure enough, you guys I, did not disappoint. And I got to do a little shout out. My, uh, one of the things that uh, we did in the um, Wonder and Whimsy Society. So every quarter we send out a mystery mailing that's packed with all kinds of fun things. Mm-hmm. And uh, one of the things that we included this this month was a, a jar of Play-Doh, which is like a natural time machine right. just with the smell, but also invited them to, to play with Play-Doh. And so their members are sharing some of their creations uh, in the uh, Escape at All Hood League in our private mm-hmm. group, which has been hilarious and awesome. Some very uh, wonderful things. I think I, I, I was on there today. saw Carolyn did some pink mushrooms, Ooh. like a little mushroom field. Aww. And uh, I think Kathy Rose did a monkey tree. You showed oh, me that yes. one, right? The kids out. love that, Kathy Rose. That was really using the monkeys. That were in the, yeah. We can't, some people may not have gotten their boxes yet. Is that like, no, not likely, but there's some outliers. Now, but possibly, that's possible. US, Sorry. US, don't get me started. Jinxed it. Uh, um, anyway, the, all that is to say that uh, our, we had a couple extra jars left over, and the kids have been playing with that. And my son Ben, you got, are you guys ready for this? Are you guys ready for your hearts to you know, break? You know, when you're sitting melt? next to me, you can't say my son Ben. You have to say he, our. He son. He is my son. I know, but when we're together, we went to Arby's today. We have to. Right? We have to say our son. That's like a that's like a parent rule because then it makes it seem like he's not my son for some reason. I'm Boy, just saying. You're really, I'm just saying. You're really sensitive I, ladies, about this. Jump in here. Help me out. <laughs> Anywho, uh, our son, Benjamin. Yeah, it is our son. Uh, yeah. He. <laughs> put your seatbelts on, you guys. Look, get, look at what he made. Oh my gosh, you guys. He made oh. a Marty with a. Look at this. Look at this. This is Play Doh. A little Marty uh, with a balloon. Uh, I gave him the idea of using this paper clip for the smart. balloon. Um, and I gave I him the idea of using hot glue to hold it up there because oh, nice. it, it kept sliding down. Sinking. So is yeah. that not the coolest little dude? He's trying. <laughs> he's trying to get it to dry out. This thing is not even close <laughs> to being dried out. Uh, but I love it so much. I know. And uh, right? yeah, the little fun things that your kids kids do. Um, mm. But we've got we've got stuff to sell. Oh. Right. All right. And now, a word from our sponsors. Like that segue? (laughs) 
<laughs> so if you are in a workplace that could use uh, a regular dose of fun and helpful practical insights on uh, beating burnout, uh, dealing with change, becoming more resilient, becoming more innovative, you might need an intervention, an adultitis intervention. We recently finished production on a uh, really fun series of videos called Adultitis Interventions. And they're all like five to eight minutes long. Mm -hmm. And there's uh, 26 of them. And we have them available in sets of what? Six, 12, 26, 26, basically how many Like a six you month want. period, yeah. Um, but it was originally uh, commissioned from a client who wanted a 26 week series for his people. Mm -hmm. And he's going to share them with their with the staff. And Which, by the way, he only wanted twenty four, so he's going to be surprised by those Ooh, extra gave two. Him like, yeah, because yeah, we're like, we need to make <laughs> it like watching, half a year. You get right? two extra, yeah, because we're like getting six months. That makes sense. You uh, know? So that was pretty fun. We had, uh, I think, he posted on Facebook recently. We have some of our wardrobe changes. We had to change wardrobe between every video, and it was uh, it was a little but bit. But we of a broke haul. the videos up into four or five different video shoot days um, yeah. to you know <laughs> keep us fresh and whatnot. But yeah, they're super fun, and we have some samples. So if you if this is something you want to send me an email and say, hey, yeah, send me one of those samples, and I'll pass it around work or whatever. It's definitely one of those unique ways to stay connected and keep encouraging people as we get out of our. As I think Kathy Rose recently said, our covid um slumbers uh <laughs> right we're trying yes. to get out of this mm -hmm. covid kind of uh rut that many of us have been in and these videos are kind of a perfect way to do that yeah if you go to escapeadulthood.com slash adultitis interventions you can learn more about it including you can see uh one of the the full videos as a sample mm -hmm. it's got you know a message there's a prescription there's something fun to do um, we had a lot of fun with it and yes. i think people are going to be pretty excited about it so if that seems like something that could work. Um, check it out. Uh, hopefully it will uh, be just what you and your people need to keep adultitis out of the workplace. Life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while. You could miss it. Somehow the television show Saturday Night Live took a lowly old cowbell and turned it into a pop culture phenomenon. The famous skit imagines a studio session with the band Blue Oyster Cult recording their hit song, Don't Fear the Reaper. Christopher Walken as rock legend Bruce Dickinson, the cock of the walk, baby, singles out the little used percussion instrument played by Will Ferrell. Hilarity ensues as Dickinson urges the band to highlight the cowbell in the song. Now, the script was funny and Walken and the other actors nailed their performances except for Jimmy Fallon, who laughed as usual. But what is most interesting to me is that Farrell and playwright Donald Campbell, who co-wrote the sketch, first had to notice the cowbell in the original song by Blue Oyster Cult. They noticed something most people didn't and saw an opportunity. Well, during a family vacation in Mexico, we bought a coconut drink from a roadside vendor for about two bucks. We enjoyed the drink and then threw out the shell. What else were we going to do with it? But then I recalled some of the restaurants we visited where frozen drinks were served in coconut shells with those little tiny umbrellas. Undoubtedly, those drinks sold for a higher price than the same one served in a boring old glass. A useless coconut shell was transformed into something of value. Enterprising business owners had literally turned garbage into money. Of course, flea markets and thrift stores do the exact same thing. And people who buy and flip fixer-uppers where most people see a dilapidated lost cause, they see a tidy profit and a future feature in a glossy magazine. The most successful people see opportunities that others miss. I'd argue that it's not a talent, it's a habit. In the middle of the panic of 1873, a six-year recession, Thomas Edison invented the incandescent light bulb. In 1876, he established General Electric, which is now one of the largest companies in the world. In the late 1970s, the U.S. experienced an energy crisis, and inflation ballooned out of control, causing a major recession which lasted for 30 months. In the midst of this economic storm, Applebee's, Ben & Jerry's, Olive Garden, and Fuddruckers were founded. In fact, all of the following entities were formed during a recession. Burger King, Jim Henson Company, FedEx, CNN, HP, MTV, Hyatt Hotels, Trader Joe's, Sports Illustrated, and Wikipedia. The first Apple store opened in the recession of 2001 and was declared dead on arrival, which of course it wasn't. It was so successful that in the recession of 2008, 
many people considered Apple stores to be recession-proof. And according to Forbes, the COVID crisis was a catapult for launching over 4 million new small businesses, the largest eruption in the history of our country. I remember talking to an elderly real estate tycoon during the economic nosedive of 2008. He grumbled about how everyone seemed to do was complain about the bad economy, and all he could see was an abundance of opportunities, and he lamented that he didn't have enough years left to take advantage of them all. Most of the time, the difference between success and failure is determined by what we decide to see. Indeed, the best time to buy stock is when the market is down. Best time to start a business is when the economy is bad. The best businesses and their ideas solve real problems. We need you to look at the world as a child would, with big dreams, boundless optimism, and a vision of what's possible. We need you to see through new eyes to find the opportunity that is right under your nose. We need more cowbell. It's the only prescription. It's the only prescription. <laughs> we got a little, little Will Ferrell here. Uh, of course. Adorable. Adorable. Here's... He's even got his little belly sticking out. If you remember that little part where his sweater comes up over his belly. I know. And he's got his little, <laughs> little belly hairs there. I mean, the detail on this is pretty amazing. It but... is pretty amazing. And I am saddened to say that the cowbell that we do own is in a box somewhere because Jason has not fully unpacked his art studio because of some projects we yes. have. So, oh, we do own a cowbell. Where is it? Yeah, and I'll tell you, it really, it, there are so many opportunities all around us. I thought um, you were going to say to use a cowbell. <laughs> well, that too, yeah. I'm like, I know, right? Well, obviously. Like, uh, yeah. I think that goes without saying. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I was like blown away when we were, when we had those Mexico, those drinks in Mexico with the, yes. the it's like literally turning garbage into money is amazing. Right. And that's, yeah, the drink was like twice as much in the coconut shell. Right. Some of you astute, uh, astute fans may recognize that story from A Chance of Awesome, uh, which was the book that we released right before the pandemic, the summer before. And uh, it still holds up, still holds up, and I think. other astute fans like Stephen Saki might notice that, yes, you did get a haircut today. <laughs> you wondered. Thank you for noticing. <laughs> Thank you for noticing, yes. So, um, yeah, so that was, I think it's one of those things that if you're keeping your eyes open and really um, available to the opportunities, it's endless right now. Yeah. It's asking that question. Now that this has happened, what does this make possible? That's the mm -hmm. same concept that we talk about a lot. Right. Um, but yeah, we need, we need to see the opportunities other people miss. That's how we get to see, uh, more cowbell. So I think it is time to, uh, to get some, some drawing on. Should let's, we do that? Let's draw. All right, a little other uh, fun factor today. This is our first show on a brand new computer. Um, so far, so, so good. So far, it seems to be handling things very well. Um, unfortunately, I had to go back to my old iPad because issues, technology. Uh, let's <laughs> not talk about that. But uh, anyway, let us, let's draw. If you have not joined us before for this, it's a chance for you to draw and amaze yourself. We're going to take uh, step by step. Step, take you step by step through a drawing of something uh, silly, fun, wonderful, awesome, whatever. <laughs> whimsical. Uh, whimsical, yeah. Above, so right? let's get going here. We're going to start with uh, two uh, diagonal lines uh, parallel to each other, kind of like that. All right. So far, so good. Now we're going to connect those lines. We're going to draw a parallelogram, Ooh. which reminds me. Uh, of a spelling bee that I oh got booted out of from, from spelling parallel wrong. Uh oh. Um, two what... L's. Two L's gonna, in the middle I was there. Say, R, two R's no. and two L's. No, just one R, but oh. two L's. Unfortunate. That's a tough one. You know, yep. there's a double, but which one is it? All right, now we're gonna draw a couple lines down from these little corners. Paul like is so. boldly claiming cowbell. Bo well, Helen, Helen got it first. Oh, oh yes, yeah, yeah. Yep, very, uh, but Paul some... did not have a question mark. No, he was he was <laughs> stating it. Right? Helen was like cowbell. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll see, won't we? Uh, we're gonna connect this line here, and then we're gonna uh, draw another line. This is again parallel to the last line, tucked in under there. Okay. Martha brings up a really good question. 
Has anyone ever seen a cowbell on a cow? Ooh, that is a good question. I mean, I, only... I was going to say yes, and then I just immediately thought of cartoons. <laughs> I know. I, I thought of Actually, like little I think I have. action figure cows, you know, for like your farm set might have one. <laughs> action figure <laughs> well, cows. Well, what, what do you call those buddies? We call them buddies, nice. but um, cow buddies have cowbells. Okay. Continuing yeah. on. All right, we're going to draw <laughs> a, an, another little line back here. Just a little, little teeny, teeny guy. And then we're going to draw, connect these up right here. All right. Oh man. So we're getting some geometry here, and I kind of kind of didn't do this great. Yeah, I was gonna say it feels a little off. Today. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this thicker. Is it the new computer? Yeah, totally. To it's this totally, computer has got made. a weird angle to it. <laughs> Any computer, it's all jittering and up things. Okay. Now we're gonna draw three lines. The first one is gonna come down a little bit of an angle here, and the next one's gonna be another parallel. Um, down there mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then this side just like that okay now as you can imagine we're going to connect these lines here and then this one here's a little subtle thing to give it that authentic cowbell look is there's going to be a little bit of a, a a bump in this a little curve so it's going to kind of like curve up a little bit and then come back down like that mm. Interesting. Yeah, I'm make these uh, edges a little bit thicker here. And uh, yeah, so cowbell, but this is not just any cowbell. It's gonna be levitating. Oh, right? oh no, you levitating. did it. Mm -hmm. um, well, first we gotta put a little face in here. Otherwise, why are you even bothering? So Elle's wondering if people use cowbells to call cows. That's a good question. I, I do we not know do the, the answer to that. We should do the history of the cowbell on a future show. We should. We should. We should, yes. we should, we should make this a two-parter, four-part series <laughs> and destroy our entire audience and, and viewership. <laughs> it's been fun, you guys. I'm going to do a little bit of a, like a reddish. So Helen poison. says, yes, you know, L, I believe they were for the lead cow to help other cows Others follow, and the farmer find them in extreme weather. So this is, I do, this is a, Inquiring a mind, curious so. conversation all of a sudden um, that I think we just need to get to the bottom of. We live in Wisconsin, for goodness sakes. I mean, there's milk cows that should be wearing cowbells less than a mile from our house. Yeah, you would think. You know? All right, so let's do a little bit of a, little bit of a lesson here um, on shading. So let's pretend that our light source is coming from up there. Okay. Okay. So if you think about this, if our light source is coming from there, then what, Kim, pray tell, is going to be the lightest area on the cowbell? Um, what do the, you think? The part closest to the arrow? Yes. yes. But what, the what upper plane? Part. The upper. Very good. See? So I've upper, been paying attention. Upper right there. Yes. Color that lighter. Mm -hmm. And, of course, this one too. Okay. Mm -hmm. At least this is the start. I would not have suggested that. <laughs> no, well, this is a little bit tricky. Okay. Because you're going to have some shadows here. Ah. So what we're going to do is there's going to be some cast shadows under here. Ooh. Right? Right. Mm -hmm. And ah. because the light is coming from there, there's going to be a cast shadow right there. Oh, my goodness. All right. Are you guys... I hope you're following along because this is going to be fun to see yours. Now, sure. what's going to be the darkest area on this thing, Kim? Um, this part right here that's like um, that the part that people can't see. Yeah. <laughs> the side. I'm gonna, you're the you're correct. The side right mm -hmm. here. Now, what I'm also going to do is um, shadows take on a a bluish purple tint. Like forever and always. Amen. Yep, always. Okay. And mm -hmm. so I'm going to um, go a little bit more gray, which is going to give the the um. Illusion, I guess, of it being a cooler illusion, Michael. A cooler color. We need that button. Yes, a it's an illusion. That would be a good one. Yeah. So there, and then, of course, this little—it's on the same uh, plane, right? Okay. All right. So you consider that to be purple and blue? Um, not necessarily. It's a cooler, cooler color. Okay. Purple and blue. It's not necessarily like a bright purple or bright blue. The okay. The shadows are cooler mm. than whatever the what they call the local color, which is 
basically the base color of an object. So, uh, <laughs> you asked, you asked. And now finally, and maybe we're going too much in the weeds, but I feel like we've got some diehards here that maybe are appreciating oh, yeah. a little bit extra. I think there's people um, paying attention better than me. Because uh, we got a little, it's a shiny object, so we're going to put a little highlight uh, right there. Okay. And right there. And right here. I feel like if you were doing this drawing a year ago, you would have added those lines, and then that would have been about it. You've taken, you kind of seem to push everyone a little farther. Well, you know, it was, it, this is a pretty simple drawing, and mm -hmm. of course people knew what it was right away, which is not a surprise. So I wanted to add a little extra <laughs> something. And then of course it's going to be levitating. So as I've taught you, draw of a little course. oval little scribble mm -hmm. under here that's slightly uh, darker than the uh, outline or the background, and Ben suggested when I told him what we were drawing that we should draw these little motion lines that it's uh, shaking. Like, oh, it's like, ding, Ben, ding, ding. right? He's like right. a consultant. Did and you guys maybe, talk about this over Arby's today? <laughs> no, but, and so we, you know, we get some little, uh, little music going here. And uh, there is your He's levitating adorable. This might cowboy. be one of my favorites. Like that Honestly, one? Honestly, it Simple, really but good. is. He could almost use some rosy cheeks, but you know. Uh, well, know. what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> but there's so many good comments here, by the way. I, uh, well, it's kind of like uh, your job to share what they are. Well, I, there's a couple. Amy Payne, who, Amy and Ben, I know you guys have a special connection from. Um, oh, some of you who may not know this, Ben was in one of Miss Amy's, Amy Payne's kinder music classes and that was his first kind of classroom experience and miss amy was so patient with ben he was a little uh he was a little shy he was a, a watch uh, uh what, do, what am i thinking of um, observer observing learner that's how i was yes to be fair. yes um, not so participatory and amy, miss amy you were fine with it and thank you because you did not shame our four-year-old son um, yeah, i got some, i got a lot someone. of i got a lot of shaming as a child um but that's look at me now. That's another show. That's Believe another show. Uh, <laughs> Can you go up to Miss yeah, Amy? Yeah, baby. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Miss Amy had a, a Google search. Yes. Okay. What here happened here? here? All right. Image result. Uh, do cows really use cowbells? No more cowbell. A new study from researchers at the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Zurich found that cows wearing the five and a half pound bells ate and chewed less than oh, cows without them. Yeah. That's heavy. Wow, well, That's and good. it really put a crack, crank in their neck. It was got arthritis up in there. Veterinary no chiropractors good. were getting, I bet they've lost some business from this. Possibly. <laughs> and now cowbells are going to be even more rare. Um, oh. I, I had to watch the Saturday Night Live skit uh, while I was preparing for you the show. To. And I love the, the thing where he says, uh, I, you know, I am being selfish because the last time I looked, we don't have a lot of songs that feature the combo. <laughs> oh, I miss Amy says yes. He was an observer learner, and he is amazing. Yeah, oh, he's pretty good. Amy. Okay, uh, Kelsey, we had we had some really good These drawings. So we had cute. quite a few this week. I Didn't have a chance to get all of them in, but uh, we did Wonder Marty, little flying penguin. So cute. And uh, Kelsey, great job mm -hmm. on that. Love it. Uh, Martha did a two two for there. We got the flying version. Right. Love that. He's got his on his. His mm -hmm. fins, his flippers out. I know. And, the uh, colors are so fun, too. Mm -hmm. I love that little green mask. Uh, Jennifer Tackett. Look at that journal in the background, the, too. I know, all the stickers. Red. I Jumping love off the little trampoline. green Wonder Marty. So like that. cute. And I think I've got one more. Yeah, Mary Beth Updike. Oh, my gosh. I love all the balloons. Little, little Marty. Love that Bring Marty. our balloon back because Stephen didn't get to see him. He was like, I missed all the Ben love. Yeah, so Here this is something that Ben made, Stephen. Kim's son, Ben. <laughs> made this <laughs> it's made out of play-doh that's it you have to go back and watch the replay for that one Steven. your son tracy also tracy miller is she on tonight tracy also chiropractor paul chiropractor <laughs> oh man steven's gotta love that one steven when yeah. you and paul meet <laughs> at the so summit nice. <laughs> you guys are gonna be like uh, fantastic by the way um, did you notice that your son ben oh also got Sharpie on the kitchen table. Yes, and my son Ben asked for a magic eraser and fixed it. Excellent. My son Ben is <laughs> awesome. Um, what were we talking about? Uh -oh. Nothing.
Uh, uh, gotta cut her off sometimes, you guys. You know how that goes. Tracy Miller had a good one too, and I realized I forgot to give it to you. So we'll, well, we'll put yeah. Her and next Stephen week. had a yeah. good one. Okay. There was a lot so of good ones that didn't get coming. a chance to we'll get in there today. In future shows. Uh, I need less cowbell, so no one. <laughs> <laughs> today is a special day because we got a twofer. I had two memes oh, I found. Cowbell had to get memes? this one in there, and then this one. Uh, I said no clowns at my party. So why is your boyfriend here? <laughs> Why does it look like there's a cowboy picture oh, in the corner? <laughs> yeah, uh, pay no attention to the. I'm like, is that? Pay Bruce no attention Dickinson to that. Or Rock legend Bruce Dickinson. <laughs> uh, I must have forgot to delete that out of that slide, but you know, this is a uh, the production value of the show is just really skyrocketing. Uh, what else we got? Oh, oh yes, we have. Uh, we're we're ending June. But we have a June Adultitis Fighter of the Ooh, Month. Yes. And None wonder, other than Mr. Patrick Love. Wonder and Whimsy, po- folks, you guys know the magic that is Patrick Love. Patrick is pretty rad. He works at a uh, university on the East Coast, and he has done some pretty neat things um, as they came back from COVID, trying yeah. to keep up the mental health of the students, which was a high priority for him. And uh, that, among many other things, are one of the reasons that we uh, uh, decided he needed to be the Adult Adultitis Fighter of the Month for June. Yes. And so we ask uh, a couple questions of our Adult Adultitis Fighters. We ask them, what are some of your favorite ways to fight Adultitis? He says, I try to find humor wherever I can, especially in work meetings. That takes extra work. <laughs> he loves celebrating just about anything. And I live by the motto that we do serious work, but we don't have to take ourselves mm. so seriously. Oh. Okay. I think that's a great motto for all of us to live by. Uh, greatest influence in your own fight against adult- adultitis? Really? You guys! Aww. Mm. So. Oh, no. Oh. So nice. Wow. I am su- surrounded by serious people. Having the Wonder and Women's Society in my life is a constant reminder to seek and to create joy in life. Very cool. That's, I'm verklempt. <laughs> Saturday Night Live. Nice Coffee talk back. with nice Linda call. Richman. Talk amongst yourselves. I'll give you a topic. <laughs> what is something you love doing as a child you still do in some form today? He says, I may be the world's oldest ultimate Frisbee player. Aww. In fact, tomorrow, Monday evening, will be my last post-accident milestone when I take the field to play Frisbee in the 40-plus pickup game up the road for me. 40 nice. and up. Nice. So that's pretty sweet. Ultimate Frisbee. That's awesome. And uh, finally, we ask, what advice do you have for someone who is feeling overwhelmed by adultitis? Anybody? Anybody? Um, meditate daily, even if it's just for 10 minutes, and keep a positivity journal where you add one positive thing to celebrate every day. Mm, that's huge. Good I, advice. I had an awesome conversation with Patrick as, as he... Um, came on board in January or February or whenever it was. And he, he underwent a pretty horrific car accident um, at the beginning of the year. And he was talking about how his daily practice of meditation helped him in the resiliency of that almost immediately. I thought found that very interesting. Like our daily habits can really build up to create muscles, whether it's spiritual muscles or whatever it is, right. That, you may need in a time that you can't imagine. Well, and that's to say you need to build them up in your normal times right. so that when you need them, you're not just scrambling to, to find right. a way. You have a, you have a routine or a habit already going. So, yeah. So for um, him to talk about his meditation practices, I, I can attest to his personal testimony of talking about that. That yeah. was pretty amazing. So, so Patrick, you are awesome. We're so glad. And as Rachel said, he's enjoying a new puppy these days. So mm-hmm. some shenanigans happening out East for sure. Yeah. So Patrick, we salute you and we love uh, showcasing adultitis fighters like you to give us all inspiration to keep on going when the days are rough and dark mm-hmm. and uh, we need, we need some, some light. So yes. thank you for being that light, Patrick. Yay. And it's time for a giveaway. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we had that uh, fun cat dancing party (laughs) picture, and it made me think of party animals. And I wanted to know, if you had to invite an animal to your next party, what would it be 
and why. Ooh. So it's a little bit open ended. Interesting. Yeah. But it allows you to be creative, which I know you will. So I look forward to that. But uh, most importantly, what can they win, Kim? Yes, this very comfortable ten dollar gift card to our lemonade stand. And by the way, I I know I've been seeing pictures of people putting these up, but I know between the adultitis fighter shirts and the ninety three percent weird shirts and a couple, was there some water bottles? What of any of that? That's, there's a water that ninety three percent design. Yes, yes. yes. Mm-hmm. So I know there's some kind of newer things that people are snagging up there from the lemonade stand, yep. and this will help you do it. So ten dollars. Um, what about you? An animal hmm. to invite to your next party? That's a good question. What do you think? Hmm. Probably not a chimpanzee. Okay. Obviously, you don't want, like, you don't want poop being <laughs> flung about. That's like a li- that's a fact. <laughs> that's uh, that's for some reason that was the first thing that came to mind. How about you? That didn't answer the question, but it. I think a laughing hyena would be fun because <laughs> <laughs> laugh at all your jokes. That's a good one. Whenever like you have that. a good laugher at a party, the party just is so much better. Especially when it's one of those laughers that everyone in the room is like, "Oh my gosh, he's got like the best laugh!" Right? Yeah, I like that. That's, that's mm-hmm. good. Yeah. Uh, Kelsey says always. Aww, a right? Penguin. Can't go wrong. No. Uh, how about a llama? A llama, Ooh. because who doesn't want a llama at their party? Right? Especially that one that's at the. Uh, at the restaurant. That restaurant we yeah. go to. Although I've heard. <laughs> Which is funny to say, like, you know that, that restaurant, restaurant we go to that has a llama? <laughs> it's actually a farm and it's an orchard and it has it's a good breakfast place. And the server is a llama. Steven, no. if you're ever really thinking about doing stuff with llamas, do it with alpacas. Well, this, maybe I should be more specific. <laughs> if you're ever going to have some fun. Yeah, baby. No, yeah. no, no, no. Alpacas are much better pets than llamas. So just to <clears throat> clarify that, this is. Well, now we all know that. Fact. <laughs> Aren't you glad you were here tonight? Uh, how about hedgehog to a pool party? Have you seen them float? No, I did not. But I did see Rachel posted a, did you see this? She posted a time lapse of a snail. Oh. And so it looks like it's going really fast. Seriously? (laughs) Oh my gosh, I gotta check that out. That was like the coolest thing I saw. She like recorded it? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Epic. Okay. You, are you are you impressed? Like she, I didn't know if it was like a thing going around. It wasn't or... like she was a National Geographic. There's you know just a snail on the ground, and she awesome. she nailed it. Uh, anyway, unicorn, <laughs> so I could fly through the air and feel the wind against my face. Nice. Okay. Ro would be with you on that one. For uh, sure. I like Helen mm-hmm. chameleon to blend in Aww. with guests and collect <laughs> intel. <laughs> what do you think of this party? Is it lame or lame, what? Lame, right? lame. Needs more cowbell. <laughs> Uh, Elle says a cow, of course, more cowbell. More cowbell. Unless they took it away and because they don't eat as yeah, much. Right. Uh, which is good. Uh, Kelsey <laughs> confirms hedgehogs and water is the best thing ever. What? Now I need to immediately go Google that Let's end after the show this early. is over. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> we, we need a, a, a sound we of a door slamming leave. and footsteps running. That's. Um, oh, that is really piquing my curiosity. Horses, horses. Hey, Martha, you can't. Go no wrong. reason given. No, no reason needed. No. Uh, Cynthia, I would give. It would invite an elephant. Aww, gentle giant. Right. How about uh, tiger? So we can have an uproaring oh, time. Which I know you love tigers or big cats anyway, Sharon. So yeah. that's perfect for you. Mm-hmm. Party animal, Marty. Nice. Uh, I was going to say chimp, so I had at least one other with my sense of humor. <laughs> Great. So we so Paul flings poop. Apparently, <laughs> sounds like good to know for the summit. Yeah, uh, <laughs> bears just because uh, uh, kangaroo to hold all my gifts. Uh, that is not I, that is not Linda Kotecki, by the way. That is she's Walter. very clear to point out that it's her husband. Walt. Uh, Did we'll she say that, that somewhere known. else? No, but she says it every time I'm around uh, her. Dancing cats. Dancing cats mm. um, from yeah. the part from the picture. Yes, yeah. right. Mm-hmm. Koalas. Uh, how about koalas? Koalas. Who mm-hmm. doesn't want a koala? You're just kind of hang out in the right. corner, Chill. sleep. Yeah, right. Um, mm-hmm. Mary Beth says, "My favorite is always the draft. They could get the high stuff and are super cool. Right, get the extra solo cups on the top shelf that you don't need all the right. time. Right, yeah, right. Uh, this down. is a party win. Lots um, and lots of puppies. Right, just and just." Invite people to a party that has like 80 puppies in it. And we spent time with puppies. I spent time with puppies and horses today. That's a, a true statement because Lucy has a new puppy That's dog a walking day. client. And then we went to the 
that equine sanctuary today. Uh, Rachel says, I can only imagine Walt gets so many gifts at every party. <laughs> Might want two kangaroos to be safe. Why do I have a picture of a kangaroo just hitting Walt in the face? <laughs> <laughs> Right? Boxing. What movie was that with Steve Carell and he got beat up? Oh, Alexander and the Terrible No Good, Very Bad, Terrible Day or whatever. How about Chipmunks for the band? Ooh, that's, good. that's like what that. the kids are watching right now, Helen. I like so. this too. This mm-hmm. Sloth, but might be a little bit late. Oh, <laughs> nice. Go. Go. Good work, you guys. Good work. I uh, appreciate your deliver. efforts. Came strong with that. It was right? very good. And they uh, missed a pun by Steven. I think uh, I'm pretty sure. Not that, but keep going. We're, you also missed a pun earlier, Steven. She Let's snailed see. it. Mm. <laughs> Bringing the puns Not since bad. 1978, that'd be my guess. But well, give or sure. take a year, 79 sure. maybe. Well, uh, this was a good. This was a good little show. A good little break in our staycation here. Yes. Um, uh, thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you. Safe travels to Martha, by the way, who's in the Atlanta airport. I know. Hope you're doing. Hope you have a good flight yes. uh, the rest of the way to Savannah. Uh, love Savannah, by the way. Good place. And uh, yeah, we do a haunted tour there. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, that was pretty the haunted cool. Haunted tour pretty was fun. pretty fun. You don't look in the mirrors. It's kind of freaky. Yeah. They're like, you will see something. I'm like, I do. <laughs> Yourself. <laughs> well, uh, just a reminder. Uh, I. I don't know if it's a reminder if I've actually said this yet, but we will be opening the doors to the Wonder and Whimsy Society on August 4th. Um, And we're going to open the doors for a limited time to new people who would like to be part of it. And if you want to know, be one of the first ones in there to make sure you are on the list, become an insider. Go to escapeadulthood.com slash insider to, uh, to, to get there and get, alerted to when we have new stuff coming out and especially the wonder Women's society um we've got some some cool things planned we we're just wrapping up our first year and we've got some founding members on the the line here today watching us and uh on the plane too martha's literally on a plane right now <laughs> this is so cool. this is in um, this post-covid world uh, but in a, in a couple weeks we actually have some pretty neat raffles yes giveaways we're going to be giving away so if you got your boxes uh members hold on to those raffle tickets because we got some pretty rad prizes that we are going to be let's uh, just say jenna and rachel put their heads together and watch out that's a scary awesome combination of raffle prizes it's pretty good uh amy mm-hmm. says i highly recommend the wonder and women's society i love the male aspect it fills my happy tank yeah Yay. we've got a, it's a great blend of snail mail things and online things and community. the community is yeah. where it's at so uh yeah so check out escape slash insider thank you to everyone who joined us this evening even jennifer from the the beach she's going back to the beach tomorrow i tell you what you guys Sweet. loyal loyal viewers here yes. so we appreciate you um showing up every week and uh, that's it. Yeah, that is it for this show. Until next time, Adult Dietist Fighters. Shine on, spread whimsy, and be awesome. <laughs>